All right, class, this week we are going to be diving in to the Commodity Futures Exchange. And what does that entail? What does it mean? And then we're going to begin to work on the aspects such as buying and selling of futures and buying and selling of options. And how can producers use this in order to mitigate uh, price variability or price risk? And this can get to be a fairly complicated topic in a relatively quick hurry. So we're going to go ahead and start with the beginning. And we're going to start by talking about exactly what is the Commodity Futures Exchange. Well, very simply, it is a marketplace for persons that are interested in buying and selling of commodities. The Commodities Futures Exchange, down to its bare bones, is basically people that are interested in buying and selling of commodities are going to be buying and selling commodity contracts. Now, this information, it's based on information from today and perceived prices in the futures. So we get into talking about futures contracts. Uh, and what that is, is people are buying contracts, buying and selling commodities at a futures price. And it's based off of those perceptions of those future prices. And it's also based off of information today. So if we look at the uh, Commodity Futures Exchange, specifically we're going to talk about the Chicago Board of Trade here in a little bit. Those prices that are going to be listed on the Chicago Board of Trade, those prices are actually futures prices. Those are prices that people are perceiving that the future price will be, and that's what they're expecting it to be, and they're often using information from today to find that. So, why would we ever engage in a commodities futures exchange? Uh, why would we ever buy a futures contract or an option contract? Well, it's for one of two reasons. One, we're going to try and make a profit. And the other reason is we're going to try and reduce risk. So what we're trying to do is maybe a producer that wants to reduce their price risk, they're going to engage in a futures contract in order to try and transfer that price risk to somebody that's willing to take on that risk in order to make a profit. And we'll get into this a lot more later on, but those are the two reasons that somebody would ever get into this commodity futures exchange is to either make a profit or to reduce that price risk. So where does this come from? Why do we even have a community or commodity futures exchange? Well, it's from one of two things. It's from parties that are wanting to guard against price movement, so they're wanting to reduce that price risk, or it came from people or parties that are wanting to assume that risk in order to make a buck. Those are the, that are trying to make a profit. So there's two groups of people here. And, and how they interact is why that's where these commodity futures exchange developed from. So let's go back and look at the history real quick. Actually, the commodity futures exchange dates back to ancient Roman or ancient Rome. It, its origins begin there. And the reason that it dates back to ancient Rome or some of the reasons that this even got started up then is a lot of the same reasons that we use it now. What we were seeing back then is that uh, the producers, they wanted to get paid immediately upon harvest. So they would go and store it and they were trying to get the local merchants to buy it from them immediately so they didn't have to worry about the price variability throughout the year. They got paid right then and there. Now, here's the downside of that. Those merchants then that buy it, if they even buy it, they're having to store that commodity and they're the ones that are having to deal with the price risk. And they didn't necessarily want to do that. So you've got the producers that are wanting to get paid sooner. And on the other side, you've got the merchants that are, uh, that are worried about that price risk even as far back as ancient Rome. So this is where the commodity futures kind of got its start in a sense. Now let's look at the U.S. history. So Commodity Futures Exchange in the U.S. has its origins in Chicago in about the mid-1800s for a lot of the same reasons that, that, we were, that they experienced in ancient Rome. In the 1800s, the producers wanted immediate payment for their goods. So in agriculture, a lot of our agricultural products are produced one time a year. So the producers, they want to receive immediate payment for it. Even though they may, they may sell it at harvest, they're not, it's not going to actually be used up until later on, but they want that immediate payment. So guess what? For the producers to receive immediate payment, that means that the merchants must buy it. So these merchants are then stuck with this commodity for a long period of time. So a lot of times, 9 to 10 months, if not closer on to 12 months. 
what can happen to prices in that nine to 12 month period or even uh, one week from now? What can happen to prices? Prices could go up, they could go down. So these merchants, they get stuck with that commodity and they're dealing with the price risk. So what are these merchants trying to do? They're gonna try and transfer that risk to local business persons. They're going to try and transfer that risk out of them. So guess what these merchants are going to do? They're going to begin to try and sell it to local businesses at a set price today for them to collect it in the future. So they're basically trying to establish future prices today and that way the merchants have a set price and the producers got paid the merchants have a set price that they're going to sell it at in a future time so they're trying to set future prices today which is the basically what the commodity futures exchange came from we are going to establish future prices and these are perceptions of future prices based on information today so we have these merchants, they're trying to sell a uh, commodity to the producer or to the local business persons that are ultimately going to use up this commodity. They're going to try and sell it today for a future price. So then the CBOT, the Chicago Board of Trade, which is a large agricultural commodity futures exchange here in the United States. It, for, it was the first in the United States for agriculture. It formed back in 1865. Whenever they formed, they allowed, it, it created this open trading. It created this public information. It also helped establish quality, quality and transaction size to become standardized. And these are still the same things that are going on today. We still have open trading, public information, this quality and transaction size that are now standardized. And it allowed us to do a lot of these things that are they're still going on still today. So what's the purpose of the Chicago Board and Trade? beside or the purpose of these commodity futures exchange besides just price risk well it also serves as a price discovery system and it allows for information for market clearing prices based on expectations it's allowing people to help clear the market and sell goods sooner and come up with these future prices based off of these expectations and then one of the main reasons that it even got started and one of the main purposes of it it is a mechanism in order to transfer cash price risk away from a producer or a merchant onto somebody who's willing to take on that risk in order to try and obtain a profit. It allows for public access to information for decision making. So if a producer is looking to possibly grow corn or cotton or wheat in their area, they might be looking at the futures market to try and establish well, what is the price predicted to be right now uh, six months from now or nine months from now or whenever I'm looking to harvest and allows them that public access to help them determine that decision-making process. So how does this work? Part of the reason that this works is the Commodity Futures Exchange, they work is because different people have different perceptions. So if you've got two groups of people and you ask them, well, what are corn prices going to do? You've got one group that says, oh, we believe corn prices are going to go up. And there might be another group that says corn prices we think are going to go down. So these different people have different opinions and they interact with, e with each other to form the supply and demand equilibrium. Now this new information, we might have new information that's coming in all the time that helps add to that, that price discovery and that supply and demand equilibrium. So let's think about it this way. If you have somebody that thinks that the prices are going to go up, then they're willing to buy today. And if you've got somebody else that thinks prices are going to go down, we have two different people with two different opposing views. One person thinks prices are going to go up. One person thinks that prices are going to go down. Well, what if the person that thinks prices are going to go up is willing to buy this commodity from the person that thinks the prices are going to go down? So now you've got these two opposing people. Uh, are two opposing opinions. They sit, buy and sell to each other. And whenever they buy and sell to each other, they're helping to establish that supply and demand equilibrium and establish that price. Now, here's the thing about it. Are the prices going to go up, down, or stay the same in that previous example? We don't know. We don't know if they're going to go up. But if they go up, well, the person who bought is going to gain. And the person who sold essentially is going to lose. So. 
some will gain and some will lose. And just for those of y'all that are music enthusiasts, some are born to sing the blues. But we have some will gain and some will lose in virtually every transaction of the Commodity Futures Exchange. 